So what's it like to be on a Formula E grid? This is like a premier class of motorsport, multiple Formula One drivers in here. Drivers like Nick DeVry have gone from Formula E to do really well in Formula One. So we know that the standard of the driver is absolutely insane and we're about to go on the grid. And also what I want to do in this video is just give you the experience of what it's like to do a grid walk. You've probably seen Martin Brundle do all those people in Formula One. I've got to show you my little badges here. Thank you. And Sorry, your pass. Sorry, your pass. And we're going through. So I've got my microphone on. We've got John Eric Verne here coming through for Penske. He might be a driver that really fancies himself. We've got all the Penske people going. How are you doing? Good? Oh, good, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Um, so, oh, yeah, and this is it. We're on the grid now. How awesome is this? Thank you so much to everyone who's liked, subscribed, watched, and everything as well. It's very, very, very cool to be here. And I want to make sure that I'm going to get everything that you want to say. Oh, we got, let's see. Oh, again. Somewhere, a big, big name Mr. on the grid here. It's Mr. Gaming Muscle. Yeah. And I was just saying, how awesome is it to be on a grid like this at a premier level of motorsport? It's, it's nice to be this close to cars, but I'm rather worried of accidentally tripping over and breaking some uh, aerodynamic components. Yes. So I'm watch, being careful. <laughs> we're going to watch out for a did not start. Right, I will catch up to you later. All we're right. going to see the grid. So let's go near the front of the grid. And I want to show you the cars up close. Here's a man, Mitchie. Hi. Very fast driver. He's been setting lightning times in the sim, I've been seeing. Yeah. Formula E R fast. I'm trying. Two. I'm trying. Any thoughts about the race, like the track? Is it pretty much going to be dry, do you think, now? Because it was a very wet qualifying. It was a very wet qualifying. So you see some paddles over there, right? So because yes. of the nature of the track, it's yeah. being like concrete blocks. Yeah. The drying is completely different at every spot. Yeah. So there might be some wet patches. Yeah. But as soon as those cars go over with a couple of times, yeah. it's going to be dry. OK. I think it's going to be a tricky one. Cars are going up the inside, locking up and everything. Yeah, stuff like that. All right. I'll see you later. Awesome. Right, let's keep going and um, see who else we can find on the grid. Here we go with the Andretti car, looking very, 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 very nice. In the rear, these are the Gen 3 machines. So the first season of Gen 3, uh, bigger batteries, um, uh, potential top speed of 200 miles an hour. But the big thing is, is the tyres, because the Hankook tyres potentially so amazing ATC up, up close and personal. No tyre warmers as well in Formula E. So these, these, these um, are going to go out at ambient temperature, just like you would on your road car. You can see the rear diffuser here at the back of the Formula E cars, where you don't get as much of a uh, obvious view of the floor, but you still have all this stuff going on on the rear diffuser to give all that downforce from the back. The wing as well, no DRS um, uh, system there like we have in Formula 1. And this is the Jaguar Formula E car, doing very, very, very well this season. And we'll try and go around the outside. It's a very, very busy grid. I should probably hold it more this way. Um, Porsche doing very, very well this season. Pascal Wehrlein starting the season absolutely on fire and has come a little bit unstuck in recent rounds. But I would say the man that you think everyone is going to be trying to beat here. And just amazing being up close and seeing how small these Formula E cars are. I mean, on the F1 grid, you just would not be able to get this close. I mean, this is literally it. In one frame, this close, you can see the whole car, which is absolutely insane. We're going to keep going down to the front of the grid. I hope you can hear me. It's very, very, very noisy. I might have to put my... Ah, somewhere I've lost my sunglasses. I really like those sunglasses. Damn it. I'll have to buy some new ones. Okay. So that is a real downer. Okay, let's keep going at the front here. And we've got the Envision cars, which were really the story for today. In this particular round, Envision putting it one and two on the grid. Absolutely insane. Great stuff. A little bit of a awkward situation to be in as a team principal, because you have your cars going head to head in qualifying. In the final, you probably don't really care who wins. But there we go. Here we go, we've got driver 61 himself, Scott Mansell, taking a very close look here at the car and making our way near to the front of the grid. You can see, sorry, it, might, it was Coopers who uh, locked out. So if you're a Cooper fan, then um, that was a great thing, not the Envision cars. And you can see here again, no rear brakes on a Formula E car which is very, very, very interesting. Um, I've been speculation, some of the sort of lock-ups we've seen might have been due to 
the uh, sort of brake by wire system they have on the back, which means in the wet conditions as well, very difficult to sort of feel your way into a braking zone. Going to keep trying to go through here and get through to the front of the whole sister in the Cupra. I've been told not to do it. Can I go this way? I'm going through here. Okay, so we can go through. Can't go through, can go through. And this here is the Cupra pole position car. How much does it mean in Formula E? Well, it's questionable. Probably not as much as it means in Formula One, just because there are so many overtakes in Formula E. 195 overtakes in the Formula E race yesterday at Berlin, which is absolutely insane. When you think you can go to Monaco or somewhere like Formula One and not have any overtakes. This, by the way, is right at the front of the grid. This is the look down, if I put it high, the run down. Let me know what you think, by the way. What would you do? If you were on a grid like this, what would you not do? And how on earth have I lost lost my sunglasses? How is it possible? We've got the fans here. Already great place to sit. The sun's out now. We've got a big screen over there as well. We're probably somewhere there. Pit on the other side. And yes, there is a gantry. We might try and get a little bit closer to the uh, safety car, the Porsche Taycan. Just want to go around here and see if we can get a little bit closer. Um, to the safety car. I think they, they saved the Porsche safety car. Interesting livery. We know we like liveries in our community. And a livery on this car is one that represents, I think, colors from all of the main teams. So that's what's going on with the Porsche safety car. And that's great, but obviously we have all of the prototypes. We can see as well, it's gonna be 40 laps, is what they're saying. And here's a man who knows a lot about racing, Mr. Scott Mansell from Drive 61. What are you thinking in terms of the weather? Because some seems to be bone dry, but some patches still have water. So I don't know how it's going to be in the race. This surface is really unusual because we've got big stones in there and it's yeah. basically pond grip. Yeah. Seems like, as you were telling me earlier, some blocks have just dry. Because this is the way it's laid out. It's in, it's in blocks of concrete. Yeah. Flip into a normal race circuit. Yeah. It's drying out in a very unusual way. So yeah. I think it's going to be quite difficult for the driver because yeah. there's certain blocks that might still be damp. Even just looking here at these two blocks, they're very different blocks, aren't they? This one is completely smooth. This one's got this sort of abrasiveness, so... Yeah, it's crazy. It looks like it should be quite bumpy as well, but I yeah. went out in the pace car earlier on. Oh, nice. And it isn't actually that bumpy, okay. uh, but the grip is inconsistent, so it's quite difficult. Any predictions for the race or just anything can happen? I think, you know, I spoke to a couple of the drivers earlier on, yeah. and it seems like it's so much more unpredictable than yeah. something like Formula 1. Yes. Uh, because they're conserving energy, they're all jockeying for position in the start of the yeah. race before they just go for it at the yeah. end. Uh, so, I don't know. Right, well, we will see. Good to see you, and I'll catch up with you later. Right. That's what we do now is we'll head back down to the grid, and um, we'll try and make our way to the end and try not to get really... Uh, in any big trouble, which I've done quite a few times already. So here we go. I'm going to swallow here to the fans watching, all ready to go. This is going to be a great spot to watch because there's no real, there's no real straights in Formula E. That's the thing. Um, they're all in these city circuits where, um, you know, something that notionally is a straight actually is a curved piece of racetrack. And why that's not normally an issue because in these sort of prototype Formula cars, you get, you have so much downforce. The limiting issue with these Formula E Gen 3 cars are Dan, and you can see here, here's the Penske car, looking absolutely great. And we'll see if John Eric Verne and Stoffel van Dorn, John Eric Verne could do a great job, here he is. Um, a man who knows a lot about Formula One, obviously, with the Red Bull, and uh, I think Toro Rosso as well. But we'll see if they do a great job. But yeah, there's no, there's no straights, and the limiting factor is, the, now the Jaguars here, absolutely great result for Jaguar yesterday. They've got Sam Bird and their team, someone who's been in Formula E for such a long time. Very first season with Virgin Racing and we'll have to see whether Sam can use his experience to basically sort of navigate the inevitable crashes and all of the bedlam you get, especially with the moisture. Even this part of the track, completely sunny, but we can see here, look at the difference in the blocks we were saying. It's still moist on the outside here. And for some reason, this block is completely dry. I don't understand what's going on. Um, Porsche putting a huge amount of investment into Formula E and obviously motorsport generally. They're not a team that just turn up. They're a team that want to win. And Pascal Wehrlein is a driver that can definitely do that for them. 
So we will see if that happens. Let's move our way a bit further down the grid and see if we can see some of the teams that have sort of not managed to make it up to where they would have liked to be. Penske here, I was able to speak with Oliver Turvey earlier, who's actually one of the most experienced drivers in Formula E, doesn't have a seat this season, but is a, re a reserve driver for Penske and also a advisor. And that means that Penske really have one of the strongest lineups in Formula E because they've got Stoffel Van Dorn, champion, they've got John Eric Verne, and they've got Oliver Turvey. It's like a, actually an insane stacked lineup. But there we go. A little cover over the front there. I don't know what that's doing. That's like a little takeaway tray the wrong way around. Here come some of the grid numbers. So keep going through. And got another Porsche here. Again, interesting to see some cars might be on a sort of wet patch, some cars might be on a dry patch. Um, here is Sam Bird as well, driver that incredibly experienced in Formula E um, for the Jaguar team. Uh, someone that we really, really, really hope um, can just sort of get the results that he deserves. He's been very, very, very unlucky on many occasions, but Jaguar looking really strong yesterday. And, uh, you know, we'll hope that they can do something from the front. Jaguar Tata car. <coughs> so going forward here, got the Mahindra. And uh, I think Lucas Degrassi here, someone who just knows so much about Formula E, someone who was instrumental in the actual creation of the championship as well. Uh, probably one of the most technically adept drivers, drove for, I think, Virgin in Formula One, and then was, was yeah, one of the first to move actually across to Formula E, which was a very, very, very big thing to do. You can see him there for the Mahindra. Now we're going to McLaren. McLaren, a very interesting team because Mercedes were a championship winning Formula E team. And then, now unfortunately, I think we lost the end of that grid because of the battery in the camera or the overheating or something. But what an incredible experience um, to be on the grid, all flooding back now to see the start of the race. Thank you so much, everyone who's supporting the channel. I massively, massively, massively appreciate you. I'm gonna be doing more grid walks with Formula E, so let me know in the comments what you wanna see, and we'll make sure that we do that next time. But yeah, now it's time for the race. Thank you so much. That's what it's like to be on the grid the Formula E race.